And I want to go out on the slope behind me and dig a snow pit because we're going to ski this. Um, it's definitely avalanche terrain and I'm feeling pretty good given my assessment up to this point about me going out there, but I'm going to have my partner wait uh, until I go out there and do a quick pit and assess the scene. Okay, I'm going to do a test snow profile here, and uh, so it's not the, the full profile, but I do these frequently uh, when I'm trying to gather information about whether or not I should be skiing the slope. Um, so first thing I do is I dig out a hole in the snow, make a really nice smooth wall. It's really imperative to make your wall smooth there's already so much variability in the snowpack, we want to control what we can. And we, can we want to dig down around four feet or so. Um, if you're worried about things at the ground, you'll dig all the way to the ground. Um, in this case, we're, uh, we just dug down four feet and you just want to make sure you're going underneath the layer you're most concerned with. Once I've dug my wall out, I go about, um, it's about 150 centimeters wide because I want enough space for three separate tests. I'm going to do a shovel shear test, a compression test, and then an extended column test. So that's 150 centimeters of uh, kind of working space I need. The shovel shear test is a really good test for identifying weak layers. This is really good for showing me some weak interfaces in the snowpack. It's not very good at giving me stability test results. So I just use this just to identify layers. And I also, in order to do my next test, the, the uh, compression test, I need to shovel away snow anyway, so I might as well do a shovel shear. So I just put your shovel right behind, I've cut a 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter column. I put my shovel back and I'm, I just slowly Jab, the, jab it in and see where I get. So right here I can see right, got kind of a moderate shear right on top of this ice crust. And I'll continue that all the way down. And I'm getting nothing else. Once I did my shovel shear test, I smoothed away this wall behind, put my ruler up, this area right here now becomes my blackboard. This is where, as I do my stability tests and start getting breaks, I'll make little marks in the snow so I don't forget where exactly those, uh, those breaks were. I also get out my pit book and I start making a record of what I'm seeing and where I'm at. And so, standard, every pit I'm always given, you know, a name, date, time, angle, aspect, elevation, height of snow, what the sky is doing, wind, weather, um, and then uh, then I'll start recording my uh, my actual snow pit data once I start doing some more tests. So I did the shovel shear. Now I'm going to do my next is compression test. Isolated a 30 by 30 column. Here we go. Kind of quality one there on top of the on top of the ice crust. Sixteen underneath it. So I'll just mark sixteen. CT twenty-two. Down lower. Mark all those 
those in the book and we're good. And then last I do the extended column test. Um, which is my most important test. I put a lot of uh, value in this because it really it shows me whether or not any of these layers can propagate fractures, which is key for getting avalanches. So once again, want a uh, 30 by 90 centimeter column. Want to make sure all the edges are straight, face is smooth, and uh, and we've cut the back nice and uh, parallel to the front face. ECT15, that's definitely a Q1, pop nice, came in the pit. Nothing else. So, this, the upper layer on top of this ice crust in all three tests shows that this is the weakest layer in the snow pit. This is the layer I'm going to be concentrating on when I'm now looking with my hand lens and doing hand hardnesses and everything. Um, if I was uncomfortable and wasn't sure that this test yielded good results, maybe there's an old ski track in it or something, I just do another one and another and another until I was feeling comfortable about what it was telling me. Now that I've done my test, the next step is for me to identify the layers, different layers in the snowpack, see how deep they are, uh, also take a look at the crystal grain type and size and, uh, and record it all down in my pit book. If all I wanted to do was go skiing, I wouldn't be doing any of this. I would just be concentrating more on the stability tests. But if I want a record, if I want to see how this snowpack is going to change over time, and it's an area where I'm coming back to, um, I, I definitely want a written record. And that's what we're, gonna, that's what we're doing here. So I've marked got my crystal card. I've marked here the layers that broke in the stability test so I know where those are. Um, and then what I do is I just take my card and I just, what I like doing is I first identify all the layers. So I just bring it down through the snowpack and I'm just noticing any change. I'm noticing changes in kind of the, the hardness or density. It feels different. And I just mark it. And I just end up with a bunch of horizontal lines on it. So right here I identified all my layers. I'm now going to write those layers in my pit. After I've identified the layers, the next thing I do is hand hardness. And so this just takes some practice um, to know how hard to push. It's about five pounds of pressure. Um, one way to know what that is, is if you take your fist and you press it against your nose and you push until it starts to be uncomfortable, that's about five pounds of pressure. So here we've got, I've got some fist hardness. Sitting on top of some forefinger. finger plus and I'll just start recording this in the book as I go and I do that all the way down through the snow pit next we are going to look at the individual grain types and sizes and in order to do that we need a crystal card and a hand lens and this is one of those times where size and power does matter. So you want as a good hand lens in order to really look at the snow crystals. So we just get, first thing you want to do is if it's a warm sunny day is cool off the crystal card because you don't want the snow crystals melting once they get on there. Just get a little bit of a skiff. And then we look and we can see these are just broken precip particles, about less than one millimeter. And then I'll just record that in my 
hip hook, and I'll do that the entire way down so every layer has not only a hardness but a grain type and a size. Okay, to recap, first thing we did is we dug a smooth pit wall 150 centimeters wide because that gives us enough space to do a shovel shear test, a compression test, and an extended column test. Once we've done those tests, we smooth the back wall and we start to look at the individual layers. And we do, once we identify the individual layers, we then do a hand hardness. Then we take out our crystal card and our hand lens and we look at the crystal type and the size to see how it changes over time. And then if we wanted to do a full pit profile, we would also do densities of every single layer and we would get a temperature profile um, every 10 centimeters of the snowpack.